everyone, Port ASM. Welcome to part three of our Alpha Models 124 Ferrari 812 Superfast. So, leading on from the finish of part two, we're going to crack on and get this beautiful Ferrari finished. Uh, made up with the interior last time, it looked absolutely fantastic. So, we're going to lead on, we're going to get all the uh, running gear on, all the glass in place, all the lights, exhausts, and just all the finishing touches and get this thing built and finished off. There we go. So without further ado, let's crack on with the build. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. So continue where we left off in part two. We're back at the Alpha Models 24 scale Ferrari 812 Superfast. Now I'm gonna mask off and paint all the inside of the windows in black. Now it's a step I missed on the first few models I did, and you could see it through the glass. So I think it's an important step to do. Now, I have contemplated brush painting this, but that would require using a water-based paint. And I don't think the water-based paint would hold up to the CA glue that's used to hold down the um, clear windows. So I'm going to spray it in lacquer, because we all know lacquer grips better uh, as a paint. So it's going to require some tedious masking. So maybe one day we'll try the brush painting, because it would be... 10 times quicker than doing this um but are we in a real rush or should we do things properly and in my eyes i think we should do things properly so careful masking using the two mil tamiya tapes going around just over the edge of where we want to spray we don't want any paint to go on top we want just to sit inside so we know the airbrush is going to get the angle inside so we're just going slightly over the edge with the two mil tape then we're going to infill it all with the larger tapes until we're fully masked away. So we can see the front, the rear, and the side windows, and we're going to do the headlights later on. Had a thought on, I would have done the headlights here, but, you know, hindsight's wonderful, and sometimes you forget things. So uh, we'll mask off the headlights in a little bit. But for now, we're just using copious amounts of 2 mil Tamiya tape and very, very carefully masking in as accurate as we can before we hit it with the airbrush. So, like I say, it's a tedious job, but like I say, are we really in that much of a rush, or should we do things properly? And in my eyes now, let's do things properly. These aren't cheap kits. These aren't to be built quickly, even though I built this in eight days. Um, I got a lot of time at the bench, so enjoy your hobby rather than rushing things. So use some uh, cling film to mask infill all the larger areas. I'm going to go around and make sure all the tapes burnished down in any troublesome areas. We've got some Mr. Service of 1500 black. It's thinned with Mr. Hobby level and thin about 60%. We've got our 0.35 apex, 16 psi of air pressure. And we're going to pop on a couple of coats, getting all those angles and recesses, getting inside the A, B and C pillars to make sure we get the coverage. And then we're going to brush paint the interior later on because we can do the interior no problem at all. But for now, I just want to get a couple of even coats on these exterior parts. And trust me, it's well worth doing. It's a bit of a boring step to do. Masking, I don't, I don't mind masking, but it can be a little bit tedious and boring. But do as thorough a job as you can on the masking. You don't want any bleed through or bits you've missed. Uh, this is the beauty of the cling film. It saves on tape immensely. Uh, as a quick and easy solution for masking large areas. So I'm just going to get in there, get everything sprayed up nice and black. Mr. Service of 1500 black is the perfect colour. You're not really going to see this. It's just to infill where the edges of the glass don't quite cover. And obviously being a lacquer-based primer, it'll grip and um, hopefully hold onto the paint well enough to not pull off with the CA glue. So... Like I say, just take your time here. I would advise putting a lid on your colour cup, especially hovering over the model like this. I like to live dangerously by the seat of my pants, uh, mainly because I always forget to put the lid on. But like I say, put a couple of coats on. By the time you've done one side and you come back, if you put the paint on thin enough, it's usually dry anyway, and you can just build it back up again with your second coat. 
So two or three like coats will do the job absolutely fine. Really love the Mr. Service of Black at the minute. It was never a huge fan, but I will openly admit I do wish Tamiya would make a black primer because I do prefer the Tamiya primers for their self-leveling properties. But can't go wrong with Mr. Service of 1500 Black. Or you could use our UMP Black, another wonderful primer. The choice is yours, what you want to use. I will say, though, the Mr. Servicer does absolutely stink. Unmasking everything nice and careful. Now, you've got to remember, we're not going to gloss this. So the finish we have here now is what we're going to have at the end. So any scratches or marks are going to glare through. So be very, very gentle at this stage. All this masking tape was detacked before it was put on to lose most of its stickiness. So we should be fine and not pull any paint off. But when you're peeling up the edges here, be very, very careful that you don't dig into the paint by accident and rip off um, any areas. And if you see any residue behind, just give it a gentle rub and it should come off. And there we go. One beautifully masked uh, window interiors. Just that one last little bit of masking tape. There we go. And that's a job well done. There we go. We know now when we put all our glass on, that you're going to see any colour of the interior colour showing through. And like I say, time well spent, and now we can do uh, the interior colour. So we've got some Vallejo model colour out of black. I'm going to thin it with a couple of drops of water. i got a nice brand new flat Tamiya HF brush. And we're going to gently paint the interior. So brush paint, black, no problem here. You could brush paint our primer as well, should you wish. Big fan of the Vallejo model colours for brush painting. Uh, and the metallic Vallejo model layers for brush painting as well. Not a big fan of airbrushing the model airs, but the colours do brush paint really well. Coverage is really well. You will find it's quite a rough um, texture inside just by the nature of the resin. It's not a finished resin as such. Now, you don't need to paint all the way down on the interior. We're just going to get all those A, B and C pillars and all the roof. I've sped things up here really fast just to get through the process. Um, but we're just going to get where we'll be seen uh, when the interior part is in. So we just need to go a little bit lower than the door card sit, or the roof, the A pillar, the B pillar, the C pillar, and just around that back window as well. And that should cover all bases to keep everything covered up. And like I say, the coverage of the model colour is very, very good. It covers really quick. Just one coat most of the time will get it. Works really well. And while we're here, we'll get inside the wheel wells as well. So in hindsight, should have done this before the caliper and disc went in, but we haven't. So just some careful painting here, and we'll get this all done. And we'll repeat this for all four corners as well. So again, just a nice careful painting to get all these wheel arches done. If you get any paint on the outside, lick it or don't lick it like you shouldn't. And get it off before it dries, and it'll come off super easy. So just some nice careful painting. Quite cathartic this at times, doing it, going back to basics. Um, just don't get paint all over the body, your fingers, and then get it on the body or all over those nicely painted discs and calipers because although it will rub off, you're just creating more work for yourself. We cut out all the PE grills and everything ready for paint. We're going to put a couple of coats down in Mr. Service of 1500 Black. Standard procedure, 6% Mr. Hobby level and thinner, uh, the 0.35 Apex, 16 PSI, two or three light coats getting from top angle, all the sides, each side top and bottom in there to get all the sides and the bottom covered and um yeah just get a nice coverage on there's a lot of grills on this thing there really is it was quite tedious this part cut them all off trimming them off making sure they go in the right position but like i say a couple of coats of that and we're good and then courtesy of the nhs we're using one of their letters to mask off our headlights so same process as we did on the windows nice careful masking with the thinner tamiya tapes infill it with the uh, larger tapes and using this paper to cause uh, create a uh, larger mask we just gently get some very light coats in there we don't need any high pressure just two light coats getting all the angles in there will do us just fine and that will give us our black effect on our headlights all we need to do then is those three little areas at the top right and that right headlight when you paint silver and the main headlight lens inside when you paint in silver as well. There's some PE trim to go in there, which we'll put on a little bit. And a very awkward headlight cover to go in place. And a very odd piece of vac form that didn't fit. I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't show it in the video. But there's a piece of vac form that looks like it fits on there. But it is way too big. 
So I'm not sure what's gone on there at all. But anyway, we'll get through. Uh, with those grills masked off um, on the same tongue depressor, we've got some Tamiya X27 uh, clear red. Uh, I do apologize for being focused on the airbrush. I've obviously clicked the autofocus in the wrong place. We haven't thinned this. I find it sprays better unthinned. Uh, we're going to put a couple of light coats down over these PE parts to give our brake lights and reflectors. As you can see, it covers perfectly well. Get a nice glossy finish, put to one side to dry for a bit, and we can add a second coat and then leave that to dry overnight before handling it. And when you come in the next day, it should be perfectly dry and ready to stick in place. Unmasking the headlights, they've gone absolutely beautiful. Thank you to the NHS for your masks. Thank you very, very much. Like I say, be very careful here. This is our final paint finish. We don't want any chips or scratches or marks. So just some very careful of masking. If you're not confident with the tweezers, don't use the tweezers, but be careful of fingernails and what have you. And there we go. Beautifully masked headlights. They're looking good as well. Very smart. And now we're going to brush paint in where all the grills go. Now this is a little bit tricky. We could have masked these off, but there's so many of the bloody things. We'd have been there all day. So I wanted to brush paint. So we've got the Vallejo model color black again. And we're going to carefully brush paint in where all the grills go. The more careful you are here, the less cleanup you'll have to do. And the less mucking around removing paint. Uh, it's inevitably going to get some SS on. So a damn cotton bud will remove any paint that gets in areas that it shouldn't. But there are about, let me see, at least a dozen grills to go on this. So lots of tedious painting um, to get everything in place. And as you can see there, a moist bit of cotton bud will get the paint off. No bother at all. Even on the satin finish, it'll come straight off. So just take your time. Don't lick your cotton buds like that. And uh, just gently rub off any dry paint. And it will come off. It does come off quite well. There we go. This finish is absolutely stunning. I was doubting this finish at one point. As I explained, you know, I even had to wake up at 7 in the morning thinking, what the hell have I done? But overall, turned out really well, and I'm happy with that colour. So like I say, just be careful, be as neat as you possibly can, but don't be worried because any excess paint will come off with a moist cotton bud. Um, but yeah, care taken will save a lot of cleanup in the future. And then with those painted, we can start putting the grills in place. So best way to attach these grills, a PVA, PVA base glue would be visible. I wouldn't advise using that. I wouldn't dice with death and use a CA glue because you'll make more of a mess than good. So my method we've used many times before is to get the parts in place, get them sat in where they need to sit. And then we can get some aqua gloss on a very thin brush and then wipe off the excess let the capillary reaction just touch around the edges and that will flow all around the edge of the PE give that 10-20 minutes to dry and that will hold it in as good as any glue it really does work well it's an easy mess free way of gluing things in place and I would recommend using that on all the grills I'm not going to show all the grills being glued in place because there's a lot of them but some of the most prominent ones are on that bonnet and around the exhaust as well. We carbon fiber these exhausts uh, and there's a nice um, grill to go in the middle here. So we're going to pop that in place over the carbon, use aqua gloss to glue it in place. Really looks the part, the semi-gloss carbon. Again, really happy I did that effect. Looks really, really well. Like I say, as long as you're careful and accurate with your brush, the infill is really good. And then we can cut off all our exhaust, which we painted in Mr. Hobby Super Stainless Steel 2 earlier on in part 2. So we cut them off with the sprue cutters. It does no harm to the resin or the sprues. Well, sorry, the resin or the sprue cutters, should we say. Uh, and then we can sand flat as is needed. So there we go. Cut them off and then flatten the edges. A little dab of Bob Smith in each hole. We can pop them in, pop them in, push them down. These look great. The nice high shine stainless colour against the PE black grill and the matte effect carbon looks absolutely beautiful. Really happy with that. 
and then do the same through the side. Those light lenses we sprayed earlier, I've glued in place at the top there, you can see. It's glued in place there as well, so they look really good. Wing mirrors, first of all, I have a piece of photo etch to go in, uh, and then they've got a reflective sticker to go on later. So the carbon wing mirrors look great as well. So a little dab of the Bob Smiths again, some very careful application and clumsy fitment of the PE. We can get this in place as well. Push your home, repeat that for both sides, and then the rear lights. So we've painted these in the X27 the same we did with the uh, reflectors. And then there's a clear section to go in between each one of these. So they've all a little dab of uh, Bob Smiths in the center. And we'll just drop in the clear part into the center. And these are great looking lights. A really nice prominent feature on the back of the car. They look really, really pretty. And yeah, nice, simple, easy assembly on these as well. And the dashboard. So dashboard fits in pretty standard for Alpha models. This. I've already test fitted this before to make sure it fits. And it does. It's a nice, snug, tight fit. So a couple of drops of thicker CA glue where the uh, windscreen mount kind of is, where the dashboard fits. And then we'll pick up um, the CA glue and kind of put some CA glue around the back to create like a weld seam, I suppose we could call it. Hit it with a kicker, and that will hold that in perfect for us. Like I said, I've already test fitted this. I know it all fits in perfect. So don't commit to glue till you've test fitted. I've had all this interior in dry fitted before, and I know it goes in perfect. And unless you're totally confident, I also re wouldn't recommend directly spraying kicker onto your model either. On the sides, we're going to put a little dab of uh, shade glue in a couple of strategic places. Make sure we get the correct door card. Line it up. Very positive fitment on these, actually. They fit in really well. As you can see, hold it for a second or two. And again, we'll have a little dab of shade glue at the top and bottom of the sides as well. Like so. And we just know it's not going to go anywhere then, basically. We don't want everything moving around on us. And exactly the same on the other side. Like I say, test fit everything. Before you commit to glue, test fit every single part. And then you're confident knowing that when you glue them in place, it will. And then the main interior tub literally slots in. And this is a really positive, it's actually quite a tight fit. But it slots in the back like a perfect jigsaw piece. So slots in and slides down. Now the actual under tray of this, for some reason, if fitted at the back or if fitted at the front, it wouldn't do both. So we ended up leaving the under tray off this car, which is a bit of a shame, but I never picked them up to look underneath anyway, so it's not the end of the world. But yeah, a little bit of a fitment issue with the resin there. Not quite sure what was stopping it. But all the interior is in perfectly, so I am not sure. But like I said, I never picked them up to look, so it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Rear discs, I've got the handbrake calipers on the main calipers as well. And then we've glued um, the, we put the disc and the caliper together and then orientated the hub where it should go. And because the fitment doesn't line up, we cut the locator stubs off, but we've lined up the hub still where it should go. And then we're going to have a little bead of uh, Bob Smith around the edge, hit it with some kicker to glue those in place, and then same as we did on the front, we'll apply some CA glue in place where this is going to go. Make sure you get the calipers orientated the right way. Handbrake this should be uh, sorry, the handbrake caliper should be at the top, I think it is on this, and facing inward. Get it lined up in place where you want it to sit. Make sure the wheel arch gap is correct, the camber is correct. And just hold it till the glue sets. And like I say, don't forget these wheels are handed. So don't glue the wheels in until you're confident you got them the right way. Look at the instructions with the reference pictures and you'll see that the wheel sweeps to the back. So make sure you get the right sides on the right place. All right. And obviously the tires are handed as well. Once you've got the wheel we need it, we can add our little CA weld team up the back. And hit it with some kicker to glue it in place. And then we can repeat that for the other side as well. So it's a real shame the under tray didn't fit. It's not the end of the world. Like I say, you're not going to see it. I never picked these things up. 
It's not the end of the world. It would have fitted, but you'd have seen it from the side. It just didn't quite sit in as good as it should have. But hey, like I say, not the end of the world. We'll paint underneath black and you'll never ever see it again anyway. Same with this wheel. Get it lined up, get the caliper the correct way. Get the glue in place, pop the hub in. Hold it, get it all lined up properly. Get the wheel arch gap correct, the ride height correct, the camber correct. Just hold it for a few seconds and the shade glue will grab it. This stuff I've got linked on Amazon. The sticker stuff is very, very good shade glue. And then we can add a few beads of it behind the back, hit it with kicker, jobs are good. And once you are 100% confident you've got the wheels on the correct side, you can glue them in place. So I've had a little dab of glue there, got them all lined up and glued them in place. And then we can start getting some of the trim on. So we'll start by putting both exhaust surrounds in place. So a little dab of glue into the hole. These things are handed as well. It's pretty impossible to put them on the wrong side. They look absolutely stunning, these things on the car. They look beautiful. Really nice satin carbon effect. Just set itself off on the metal work of the car. And those exhausts are beautiful with the PE as well. Absolutely stunning. Let me grab the other side and glue that in place. Like so. And then our rear diffuser will sit in the centre. And again... All these parts have been test fitted several times to make sure they fit in place. So totally confident everything's going to fit. And just beautiful carbon. It looks really good. It's such a subtle carbon effect in a satin as well. Um, it's totally different to what I normally do. I like my high shine. But on this car, it just really suits it. It looks absolutely beautiful. Rear lights, these look absolutely great as well. These didn't even need gluing. I test fitted one and I was like, oh, it, it, it held itself in. Must be the tolerances of the resin. So I was like, okay, good. Now they are kind of shaped to go in one particular way. So make sure you line them up. You'll see what I mean if you build the kit. You'll see how it sits in place. I've sped this up because there's not much to see really. But these lights are absolutely beautiful. They really are a very prominent feature of the back end of the car. And there we go. Now, we've got some awkward PE strip to put in the headlights. This is where things start to get a little bit tricky now and you really need to take your time. So we've got some of the Bob Smith's odorless glue. It's an important step, this, because we don't want any of our clear parts to fog up. We've got some very awkward PE strips that have been cut off the fret and cleaned up. And there's the smallest of locating points for this stuff to sit in place. So hold it in place. Let a couple of pieces grab it and then work your way down, get it all set in place like so. Repeat for the other side and then we can come in with my big head in the way and get some glue in place for our headlights. And like I say, it came with vacuum form parts of this, farts, ooh, parts for this that I cut out perfectly and they just didn't fit. They were way too big, so I'm not sure what's going on. If anyone's built it and knows, Please let me know. But if you look on the clear sheets for the glasswork, you can see these pieces, which are perfectly shaped to fit the headlights. Now, the problem is there's some raised pieces, which is where I think the vac form comes from because it was convex. Um, that it, it lifts over. Now, I got the, the headlights on, not perfectly. There was a little bit of a gap in one place. But yeah, I think the vac form piece will be better. It just didn't seem to fit at all. Whether I've done something wrong, I don't know. But by holding these in place, using our cotton buds to hold them and burnish them down, the glue will eventually grab. And they looked okay once glued in place. Not too bad at all. Um, the clear parts on these, the glass parts, are the weakest point of the kit. The, head, uh, the windscreen on this needed trimming. It was a little bit too wide. So, yeah, it needed trimming. So, I had a test fit, saw it wasn't quite fitting at the top, and thought, okay, it needs a little trim. So, I got my Zoron PE shears and just trimmed off the smallest amounts until I got it to fit a lot better. So, obviously, don't go mad. Just trim off a little bit. These Zoron PE shears are absolutely perfect for cutting things like this. They are razor sharp. So, I just took the tiniest edge off each side and it fitted a lot better. But like I said, they are still the weakest point on the models. They really are. Um, but I can't see how they do it any other way. Because of the nature of the resin, this is probably the best we're going to get. So, 
you go do the best job you can that's all we can do so a quick test fit again we've got some protective plastic on the outside so make sure the inside is clear of fingerprints the outside we can deal with later and then my advice would be what most people say about these is to glue one side first with a few dabs of the uh, Boltzmann's odorless glue we can um, apply some glue row required like I say we're just going to do one side to begin with so strategically place a few dots in place you don't need a load of it and then spread it out a little bit um, evenly and then we grab our glass and we can pop it in place on this side get this side glued on and then move over and do the other side as well so Careful handle on the glass, try not to get any fingerprints on the back, otherwise you're going to have a fingerprint inside. Make sure you go around the correct way. The, the correct way should have a removable film. And get it in place. Line it up on the one side where you need. It's a little bit of a tricky edge on the bonnet we need to get it under. There we go. Line it up on the other side that isn't glued as well. Make sure it all lines up correctly. And then start burnishing down that left-hand side. So I find getting some of the pointed cotton buds I use and holding the top in place then the bottom and burnish down to try and hold in place now because it's odorless it's not as quick to grab as the other CA glues which gives you a little bit of work in time but also means you need to keep burnishing it until it cures so it does take a few more seconds to do but the beauty of that is you get a bit more time to work on it and then once you're happy that side's glued in place you can move over and do exactly the same to the side, a few dabs of the glue where required, and then burnish that side down as well. So I'll show the windscreen done almost in full, and then the other ones will just show going in place. So they are tricky. It is the most daunting part of these kits. Once you've done a few, it becomes a lot easier. Um, like I say, this one's not the best fit. And I end up with a couple of ripples on the very top of the screen on this, unfortunately just because of the nature of trying to get the complex shape of the screen in. Um, but it is what it is. Like I say, we just need to get that little edge in there. There we go. Then use our cut cotton buds to hold the top and help burnish it down. Like I say, we do have a protective screen on the front, so you're not going to scratch um, the clear parts underneath, but we don't want any excess glue going everywhere. So just be really, uh, careful of that, and that's why we don't apply too much glue underneath. We'll just keep it pressed down until the glue grabs it. So it's a little bit difficult to do, but you'll soon get the hang of it. Once you've done one or two of them, it'll become pretty easy and you'll kind of get your technique dialed in. Like so. There we go, same on the back, same process. Just take your time, get it glued in place. Now the back was, while well the front was needed trimming, the back was short. <laughs> on the side, it was actually a little bit too narrow. So don't put it too far over on one side like I did now to move it then. Uh, the sides pretty, fit in pretty well. The only thing to be careful of here is, is uh, the mount for the um, side mirrors. So line that up with the hole in the resin as well. And again, glue the front, then the back as well. And just work your way around this systematically so it's the easiest way to do it um, don't go crazy with the glue take your time and keep that uh, clear plastic on for as long as you can after you've done this to keep that clear part nicely protected and then repeat on the other side as well and as you see the more you look at it the better that metallic finish looks just looks great in that semi-gloss finish really loving it. it was a bit unsure at one point but looks great the interior looks great on the inside as well obviously because that's where it is and uh, yeah very happy with where it's going now we have the ferrari badges so we're going to use those same stickers as we had before the 3d um, stickers for the ferrari logos they look a lot better so i'm going to use my eye to line it up in the middle first. And I was out by a millimeter. I was literally out by a millimeter. So we popped it in place. If you don't burnish them down, you can still move them around. So don't push down until you're happy it's in the place where you want it. You can move everything around. 
we're going to get our metal ruler, which I would recommend having a plastic one. You've got less chance of scratching your model. And I am literally a millimeter off being absolutely perfect. So literally a millimeter off. So just remove it, pop it back in place. And as you can see, look, it's not really stuck down at all. And just move it over, make sure it's all straight and where you want it. And then get the ruler again to make sure it's equidistant in the middle. So I think it was about 19 mil each side, 18 and a half, 19 millimeters each side. So I'm using the edge of the headlight to line it up. And then double check the other side as well. Don't have to be 100% precise, but I'm trying to be as precise as I possibly can. On the side, we've got the Ferrari badge emblems as well. There's a little recess in the body for these. And these uh, stickers look absolutely phenomenal. They're a big improvement over the kit supplied decals. Um, being 3D kind of embossed stickers. They're also a much more vibrant yellow as well, which looks a lot better than the kit supplied decals. So thank you for these, Adam. They've been a real lifesaver on some of these kits. And uh, yeah, they look absolutely amazing. They really do. And you get all different scales on the sheet as well. I think you get one twenty fourth, one sixteenth, and one twelfth too. So very nice touch. I need some more though. I need to find some more because I've used quite a few of these now. Like I say, you don't need to fully commit to sticking in place first. Get it all lined up where you want it, and then burnish it down with a fresh cotton bud. But a vast improvement over the kit decals. Huge improvement. Uh, so if you are building any Ferraris, I would recommend getting these because they look absolutely brilliant. So I'm a bit pedantic with this, a bit OCD, making sure they're all straight and in the right position. So it's, it's great being able to remove them and put them back on. On the front grille, we've got a metallic um, sticker that comes with the kit. So just line up at the very top of my tweezers, which is a little bit tricky. And then there's already the Ferrari Pranton Stallion logo on the photo etch, so we can line it up perfectly where required straight away. Just pop it in place, like so. And then one for the back as well. So we left this on the back and paper here. We can line it up using the boot uh, center part. You can see where the center is. Pop it in place, push it down, and then peel the plastic off carefully. So burst it down with your cotton bud. And then grab your tweezers on the plastic and just very gently and slowly peel it back. And there we go, one nice fancy Ferrari logo. Now, number plates, it comes with decal number plates and photo etched number plates. So you can put those on if you wish. They are black and red. I've been using these metallic ones lately and I think they look really smart and I found the easiest way to put them on is the double sided tape I use for my seat belts. So that's what I've been doing lately. A couple of strips of that, line it up, you can move it around a bit and I really think these are a nice classy look on the model. So I've been using them a lot. Time to remove all our cellophane off our plastic. You can see how lovely those clear parts are. We've got a nice Ferrari badge for this back window as well. So same process as before. Line it up, we can see where the center is on the window quite easily. Burnish it down and grab uh, the plastic off the back. And then we can go around and remove all the rest of the plastic off all the glass as well. Be careful with the knife, don't scratch it. And don't be pulling on it too hard or you'll rip it off. Now I did check this one to begin with, just to make sure everything was lined up well. And there we go, beautiful clear glass, looks absolutely lovely. Same with the headlights as well, very carefully remove the covers off those two. And then our window uh, mounted wing mirrors. So a little dab of um, white glue in there, and they line up perfect, and they could literally be held in place by themselves, to be honest. We put the mirrored uh, back finish on them as well, for the in to... Uh, Simulate the mirrors and now the photo etch wipers. Now, I got no problem building these wipers as you can see. We've cut the um, P from the fret, we're trimming off any excess bits of PE. 
and then we get a sand and flat as well with our PE file. Attaching these buggers to the car is a different story. If you're watching a live stream today when I was doing this, there was a little bit of profanity. Yes, there was. The air was a little bit blue because they were really doing my head in. So I was trying to be fancy by attaching them to the car using UV glue because it gives you a little bit of time to work and it made such an unholy mess that, yeah, I, yes, swore a lot, had a lot of touching up to do, thankfully, which I could fix and then used the Davissier glue and got them in place first time perfectly. But these need folding. They are tricky to do. Uh, having a folder machine like the Small Shop Tools one is a very handy investment to have. But I was not very impressed at all trying to attach these. Like I say, building them, not really a problem. They're a little bit tedious to do, but they are actually pretty easy in the long run. So it's a case of looking at instructions, looking what needs bending where, and then using the machine appropriate edge to clamp down and hold it, and then using the razor blade supplied to bend them up. So on these arms, you need to bend up both sides, which indicates the 3D shape of the um, arm itself. But you may need to faff around, turn this around different ways to be able to bend the appropriate way because of the angle of that arm. So you may have to faff around doing this. And then like you say, you just bend up. This one you can do with your fingers, it's that easy. And then we've got the center piece that holds the blade where the edges just need folding up and around. So we use our tweezers for that. Nice and simple, not too taxing at all. So like I say, no problem building the buggers. It's getting them on the car is so tedious and it really ruins all your hard work if you're not careful. So my recommendation would be CA glue, but only if you're confident. We'll put a little bend in that arm so it holds the blade, and then with a little dab of glue on the previously bent arm, we're gonna pop that in place and hit it with a little bit of kicker to glue it in place. And then with a little dab of CA glue on each end of the arm, we can grab the blade and very carefully and gently line it up on both sides until it grabs. And then grab our Sega activator again, hit it, and it instantly sets all the CA glue, and we have one wiper complete. So repeat this for the other side. It's a slightly different blade for the other side. So just follow the instructions, exactly the same principle in building it. And then we're going to use a bulldog clip to mount it to spray. So like I say, assembling them, no problem at all. We're going to give them a couple of coats of Mr. Service of 1500 black on each of them. Nothing too drastic here. There's the other arm. As you can see, it's a bit bigger. But getting these buggers in place was a nightmare. It was about 20 minutes of faff from UV, UV glue and about five seconds with a dab of uh, CA glue to get them in place perfectly. So I should have used Sagal in the first place, and it would have saved a lot of frustration. And here we go. That's it. She's done. So absolutely made up of this. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. That satin finish on the Grigio Silverstone looks great. Gloss black wheels, those yellow calipers, and all the carbon accents look absolutely stunning. Those 3D badges really add to the model as well. I think they are beautiful. And that red on black interior looks great and this is a fantastic looking car to begin with very happy with this one it's very unusual for me to do this kind of non-gloss scheme but it turned out great so it's the alpha models 24 scale ferrari 812 we primed this in i think we did it in yeah we did tamia gray fine surface primer um it was then painted in zero paint grigio silverstone paint um we give it a tamia black panel line wash we give it a matte coat with mr hobby semi-gloss uv cut uh clear coat wheels were done in gx2 gloss black the brake calipers were done in uh brembo yellow from zero paints discs were done in zero paints ceramic um carbon effect paint carbon on all the bodywork was done with tamia carbon and matte coated with the same coat we did on the um main body Interior is done with zero paint, some carbon effect in there as well. And I just think this looks absolutely beautiful. 
It's a fantastic shape, and I'm very happy with the outcome of all the color combinations and the matte coat. I think it looks great. I did have serious doubts at one point, but I'm very happy I stuck with it right to the end because I think it just looks absolutely beautiful. By far one of the best looking Ferraris this thing. 800 horsepower from a normally aspirated 6.5 litre V12. It sounds absolutely phenomenal. There's a video on Harry's garage of him driving one. Um, and it's just a beautiful car. And I'm just very happy how this has turned out. So there we go. There's another build. I think that's the build number 12 of the year complete. Not too bad so far. Um, we're going to build plenty of these in the future. So stick around for more alpha models. Um, but for now, let's go back to me with some final thoughts. So there we go. That's turned out, yeah. I was a little bit unsure about that semi-gloss finish. I really was, to the point I very nearly chickened out and glossed it. But yeah, I'm happy with that. I think it's a very nice contrast of high-gloss wheels, beautiful yellow calipers, and that satin effect paint. It turned out really well. Uh, what a beautiful looking car that is. Absolutely stunning. Admittedly, out the several Alpha models, what have I done? I've done two hobby design, one Alpha models, two Alpha models now. Um, the Audi was far superior to that one, but that's a newer kit, and I think they've improved as they've gone. Still a lovely kit. The weak point of the kit is still that glass. Um, it kind of bubbles at the top, but it doesn't quite fit because it's quite hard to get those convex edges. It's just the way it is with it, unfortunately. It's a little bit disappointing at times. Um, but other than that, it's turned out absolutely fantastic. Love that matte paint, gloss wheels, gloss calipers, that beautiful red-black interior. The carbon accents look absolutely stunning. And uh, it just looks great. So thank you all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed that build. I've got the next build planned. I don't think I'm going to show you, actually. I teased you last time, so I was going to show you. I don't think I am. I think you can wait and have a look at it, but I try to pick something a bit different, a plastic kit this time, and we can get back to Lanty now as well, because I've got my roll cage parts as well. Um, so stay tuned, and I'll show probably the bench update in a couple of days. The question for today, let me have a think. I think I've asked it before, but has anything ever gone wrong? And it was a happy mistake, but you still doubted it was going to look good right till the very end. Is there something you've done that you thought, oh, no. And I literally did it with this. I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning the other day, and the first thought in my head was, I've ruined that paint job. I shouldn't have sat and coated it. At the very least, I should have just left it the shiny, semi-gloss metal effect got off the bare paint. And I was out here at like half 7 in the morning having a look at it, you know, bleary-eyed looking, thinking, oh, my God, no, it actually looks okay. So... Not a happy accident, but something you've done, regretted, and then it still turned out well. So it could be a colour, carbon effect, a clear coat, an interior colour. What have you done? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, as always, all the links are down below for everything social media related. Steiner Machines there, all the ISM stuff, all the UMP links. Uh, they offer Hangout Group, they'll have the bench page. You've got my personal modelling page. An email address, get in touch with me, the store from for Amazon, my product list, and the patron uh, is there as well. On two-week early access and all the videos, and knowing that you're keeping these videos going, you can help support myself and the content by becoming a patron down below. You get two-week early access, two -week early access on all the videos if you go tier two or higher, um, and you get um, yeah, you get the knowledge knowing you're keeping this going. So there we are. There's also a PayPal me and a Buy Me Coffee link as well. Um, and of course, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification, and click that uh, thumbs up button and leave a comment. Love reading all your comments. It really does spay on with the builds. Uh, everyone likes a bit of feedback. And uh, let me know your thoughts on the build. So there we go. Enjoy your day, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.